Some interesting people moved across the street from us, and it's interesting because there's a big house, us, and a little house across the street from Mount Carmel um, that was not previously occupied by anyone, I believe. And all of a sudden, these uh, four guys move in, and they move in with these equipment cases. They didn't have any furniture or anything like that. They just had equipment cases. Sorry. They just had equipment cases. They didn't move in any furniture. Um, they had really nice vehicles. They appeared to be in their early 30s or late 20s, mostly early 30s. Serengeti sunglasses. They claim they, when we finally got to talk to them, they claim they're going to TSTC, which is a technical college. It's where you go to learn, you know, wood shopping, uh, auto mechanics, things like that. And it was a big question of who these people were, you know. And finally, I guess David went over, we went over with some beer and pizza and invited them, welcomed them to the neighborhood, which is literally nobody else but us. And they said, uh, the hand came out and grabbed the beer and the pizza, and then the door shut. He said, sorry, I got my girl in here. I can't let you guys in. And they're like, okay, well, thanks. Nice to meet you. That kind of thing and walked away. And then they came over later. I guess Robert came down the following day, and they pretended that they were interested. And we had one of those circular things where you train a horse. I can't remember what it's called, but that was in the front yard. And they pretended that they were interested in, in maybe purchasing that which this thing was old. I mean, it was rusty and stuff. There's whatever. It's whatever, guys. Okay, great. But I remember asking Robert Rodriguez. He introduced himself as Robert. I remember talking to him and saying, so what are you studying at TSTC? And he said, philosophy. And I said to myself, philosophy at a technical trade college? That's fascinating, yeah. It, they just didn't seem to be very together with their story, Okay. Steve was worried. Wayne was worried about who these people were. David didn't really care. It seemed that there were some kind of government agent. You know, we had a feeling that we were definitely being uh, under surveillance. They, you know, it's not like they were deceiving us. David didn't care. He said, "Look, I don't care who they are. ATF, FBI, it doesn't matter. Um, this guy, these guys, we can, I can work with this guy. You know, this guy has had some scriptural foundation in the background. He's a Catholic and." He said some issues with the Bible, and I think I can, you know, I can show him some stuff. I think I can turn him. I think I can, you know, bring him, bring him in, show him the seven seals. And so, you know, Koresh spent many, many days with him, just talking scripture. There was a period of time where Robert came over and had a firearm. It was an AR-15, and he handed it to David. Said, "I just got this at a gun show," and David whipped it apart in one in less than a minute. And took all the parts apart, and, and he was like stunned. I was kind of I was watching this happening, and Rodriguez was a little stunned at how good David was with the firearm. And he said, "Oh, look at that! Look, right there, it's um, that trigger's been sawed off a little bit. That trigger's been um, what do you, filed down, which makes that full auto." He goes, "That's an illegal gun. You didn't get this at a gun show, but Robert, that's illegal. You got to take care of that. You got to pay the proper tax on that." And he put it back together and handed it back to Robert, and Robert left with his tail between his legs. But David pointed out that, you know, he did not get to the gun show. This, this thing's illegal. So time went on. David got to know Robert. Um, there was February, on February 27th, the night before the raid, an article had come out in the Waco Tribune Herald, the Sinful F Messiah series. It was a six-part series about the group out here, David Koresh, being this, this C-U-L-T word leader. Um, and, you know, it was a very, very negative hit piece. It really, they never talked to David. They didn't talk to any of the people in there. It was just basically about how David, you know, is this, uh, is he thinks he's Christ and he's got all these kids and he's got all these firearms. And they kept asking for when is the government going to come in and do something about it. You know, it's like nobody here had harmed anyone. The state had come in, they dropped their case. And they're still coming forward with this kind of propaganda stuff. Robert brought that article over and he was very worried about it. And, you know, he says, what do you think about this, David? And David was just like, Robert, you know us here. You've been here about a month now. A couple months, I think, they were over there. And he said, you know who we are. Um, listen, uh, hopefully, why don't you, you know, at that point, I think it was like, why don't you just go back and talk to your bosses and let them know? He goes, what do you mean? He goes, come on, Robert, you know, let's, let's drop the charade. We know who you are. Just... Go tell your bosses there's nothing going on here. And so, you know, I guess, I guess I know Robert left and he was upset about the article coming out, for sure. 
We still didn't think that the raid would happen the following day, though. I remember we played football. And it was something we had never done before, is actually played organized sports. And some of the younger guys got out there, and we had a football game that night. And it was very weird. It was surreal because it was like we were all very nervous of what could happen. This article was obviously terrible, and we understood it was going to change our lives, probably for the worst. But And cars were coming up and pulling up on the Double E Ranch Road, and they were looking at the building. So we're playing football, and like five or six different cars are coming up and checking the place out. And it was just weird. It was this feeling of foreboding, I guess. Um, but the game was fun. We enjoyed it. We had a good time. And then went in, and that was like the last hurrah. And I guess, I, you know, the next day, all our lives would change forever, and we didn't really realize it was going to happen that quickly.